Now, there are a number of drugs that act as selective beta blockers. So, for example, acetabutalol, metaxalol, esmolol, atenolol, metoprolol, propranolol, timolol, pindolol, and labetalol have primarily beta blocking effects. And these will have multiple potential applications. So, for example, hypertension is treatable because of the diminishment in cardiac output, diminished renin secretion due to the beta receptor blockade on the juxtacomerular apparatus cells. These drugs will diminish angina pectoris because they'll diminish cardiac uh, myocyte contractility and heart rate that will diminish oxygen consumption. Beta blockers have been shown to decrease mortality after an MI. For supraventricular tachyarrhythmias, these drugs are very useful, particularly propanolol and esmolol. They will diminish AV conduction velocity and by definition are class two antiarrhythmic drugs. For congestive heart failure, these drugs can be used very carefully to slow the progression of heart failure. The idea behind the use of these drugs in heart failure is to diminish the maladaptive remodeling that occurs by chronic sympathetic stimulation of the heart in patients with heart failure. One has to be very cautious, however, because beta blockade can exacerbate heart failure when used in patients who are acutely ill with heart failure or in high doses. Beta blockers can also be used for glaucoma. The primary drug here is timolol, which can be applied locally to the eye. These drugs will diminish the secretion of aqueous humor. Now, the main toxicities of these drugs in many ways are predicted by the effects of the drugs. So, for example, these drugs can cause impotence. They can exacerbate asthma. They can have multiple cardiovascular adverse effects. They can slow down the heart rate. These are all nodal blockers, so they can cause AV block, and as mentioned before, they can worsen or cause CHF. Many of these drugs get into the brain and therefore can cause CNS adverse effects, such as sedation, and they can cause sleep alterations. And one should use these drugs in caution with diabetics. They can alter the release of insulin, and they can alter the body's response to hypoglycemia. Now, one needs to also be familiar with the selectivity of the beta-1 versus beta-2 receptors of these various drugs. So, for example, several of these drugs are non-selective beta-1, beta-2 antagonists. So, for example, propanolol, timolol, natalol, pindolol, and labetalol are all non-selective beta-1, beta-2 antagonists. In the beta-1 selective antagonist class, which are used very often because of the cardioselective nature of these drugs, there are drugs like acebutalol, which is a partial agonist, Metaxalol, esmolol, which is a very short-acting drug, atenolol, and metoprolol. And one can remember these drugs by the mnemonic of a beam of beta-1 blockers. There are also drugs that act as alpha and beta antagonists. Carbetalol, very commonly used now for congestive heart failure. Labetalol, mentioned above as a beta-1, beta-2 blocker, also will block the alpha-1 receptors. And then there are certain drugs that will act again as partial agonists. And one has to be aware that partial agonists in the presence of large concentrations of the endogenous molecule, in this case, norepinephrine, can act as antagonists. And drugs in this class would be acebutalol, as mentioned before, and pindolol.